the traditional Vietnamese arts can be found scattered in the villages and are closely linked to the local lacquer material as an indispensable technique. The lacquer coats and the methods of gilding the Buddha statues with gold have brought a magnificent look to these statues and a sense of meditation to the temples. The crimson color extracted from cinnabar and the golden color from real gold create a reflected light in the very dark space of the temple interior and increase the imposing and religious nature. In China, lacquer-coated wooden furniture was found in royal tombs in early era. In Vietnam, however, it is difficult to find any such thing dated before the 15th century. In the period following the Great Li and Chen dynasties, from 1407 to 1427, the invaders from the north made a lot of destruction to the Vietnamese culture from which the nation had to recover. The Buddha statues of the 16th and 17th centuries are the evidence of lacquer-coated sculpture as Buddhism was popular in the villages and communes. Under different dynasties, the same statue or wooden tower may have been renewed with a new coat of lacquer as it became old. The new coat may mislead the chronological estimation but it helps maintain the aesthetic look of the statue or the wooden furniture. Several coats were applied onto the statue. Over time, some parts flecked off or smoothed out, creating a time-endowed natural beauty. The statue of the 42 armed goddess of mercy at the Heart Pagoda was made in the 16th century, and its lacquer coats help enhance his natural and magnificent beauty. However, the grinding and polishing techniques used in making antique statues are not used much for paintings. The wooden worship objects and ceiling paintings are made using raw lacquer, with cinnabar being used to create different degrees of the crimson color. The golden color is derived from the use of real gold, silver color from real silver. White color is derived from shell, eggshell, and ivory powder. The dark blue color is derived from mixing lacquer with white materials. The portrait King Li Nam De and Queen, made about 200 years ago, was typical of the painting style of applying the crimson golden color with the flat space. The characters were put onto each other with the size depending on the status and without the use of depth. Beside the use of raw lacquer, the ancient artists also apply a technique of carving using a sketch which was then modified by several lacquer coats mixed with alluvial soil. The modified work was then painted with lacquer and color materials. These paintings, dated from the 18th and 19th centuries, are displayed along the corridor of the pagodas. One cannot imagine an ancient farmer's tools without any lacquer-coated wooden item. Lacquer was used for cementing a boat, painting bamboo baskets, and polishing many household items in a popular manner. A lot of the local lacquer trees are planted in the midlands of Wutaw province. Lacquer is to be taken before the sun rises so as to ensure its strength and a high content of pure substance. Lacquer evaporates quickly and becomes burned when exposed to air. Therefore, it must be closely covered and quickly processed.
The process of making lacquer coated wooden items for worship and household uses is not much different from that of making a wooden board for the artist to paint. Raw lacquer is applied onto the raw wooden item, which is then framed and made smooth. Then comes the smoothing and polishing activities using water, and finally, the silver gilding activity. A varnish coat may be applied onto the silver coat. The wooden board for painting is often processed more thoroughly. The board is first coated with lacquer, then a coarse homespun fabric sheet is pasted onto the board, which is now called a frame. A mixture of soil and stone powder is applied evenly to the surface of the frame. The uneven spots are made even using sandpaper. A mixture of alluvial soil and lacquer is then applied to the surface. Finally comes the smoothing and polishing activities, which are carried out up to nine times. Then, the artist will use the finished frame for painting. The introduction of lacquer paintings using the smoothing technique originated from the artist who graduated from the Indochina School of Fine Arts during the period of 1925-1945. The term pumice lacquer was formulated with the idea of using a traditional material to express the Western fine arts in a three-dimensional space. It is this wish to express things as seen by the eye that they had to use the smoothing technique to create a deep space and the layers in perspective. Meanwhile, many other artists want to return to the oriental two-dimensional technique and to give up the penetrating three-dimensional one.
they even try to express things in an abstract manner using the local lacquer material. The smoothing and polishing technique is no longer important. In this regard, the brush is not very important, but it may be more useful to use pumice, hammer, pliers, broom, trowel, and even the artist's hand. Now let's listen to the artists. People initially thought that the lacquer material is more appropriate to the precise decorative painting style. Over time, through my work, I realized that the lacquer material can deliver the same art language as other painting materials. This, however, requires the artist to be a bit more innovative, without relying on the flat, polished, and smooth norms, and to explore new ways to meet the emotional needs. While the artists in the world are looking for new materials, lacquer itself has contained such things, illuminating substances or strong reflective substances. This means the multimedia technique already exists, and the artists don't have to change much of their technique. My painting style is to use very old techniques, including the operational aspect. In general, we make little change in the materials and techniques. What we do is just to express our present ideas in the paintings. Lacquer paintings are different from other kinds of paintings in that there are breaks in the process. After completing a portion, I may have to wait for two or three days before I can resume painting. By then, my enthusiasm may have burned out. Normally, I have an impromptu painting style. Today, when I resume doing an incomplete painting, I may think it should be different from what I thought it should have been yesterday. I often take advantage of the fact that the smoothing and painting operation may make me deviate from the original direction in order to create new innovative inspiration. I do not rigidly stick to the original sketch on paper.